the 2023 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine has been awarded to Catalin Carrico and Drew Weissman for their discoveries concerning nucleoside based modifications that enable the development of effective mRNA vaccines against COVID-19. Through their groundbreaking findings, this year's laureates have fundamentally changed our understanding of how mRNA interacts with our immune system. They have contributed to the unprecedented rate of vaccine development during one of the greatest threats to human health in modern times. When SARS-CoV-2 emerged in late 2019 and rapidly spread to all parts of the world, few thought that vaccines could be developed in time to help curb the increasing global disease burden. Yet, several vaccines were approved in record time, with two of the fastest approved and most effective vaccines produced with the new mRNA technology. The concept of using mRNA for vaccination and in vivo delivery of therapeutic proteins was first proposed over 30 years ago. But several hurdles had to be overcome to make this a clinical reality. Early experiments demonstrated that in vitro transcribed mRNA stimulates undesired inflammatory responses and inefficient protein production in cells and tissues. A turning point was the discovery by Carrico and Weissman demonstrating that mRNA produced with modified bases evades innate immune recognition and improves protein expression. These findings combined with the development of efficient systems for in vivo mRNA delivery, established system of the SARS-CoV-2 spike antigen, and unparalleled investments by industry and governments led to the approval of two highly successful mRNA-based COVID-19 vaccines in late 2020. The discovery by Carrico and Weissman was critical for making the mRNA vaccine platform suitable for clinical use at a time when it was most needed, making this an extraordinary contribution to medicine and paving the way for future mRNA applications. Vaccination stimulates the formation of an immune response to a particular pathogen. This gives the body a head start in the fight against disease in the event of a later exposure. Vaccines based on killed or weakened viruses have long been available, exemplified by the vaccines against polio, measles, and yellow fever. In 1951, Max Thieler was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for developing the yellow fever vaccine. Thanks to the progress in molecular biology in recent decades, vaccines based on individual viral components rather than whole viruses have been developed. Parts of the viral genetic code, usually encoding proteins found on the virus surface, are used to make proteins that stimulate the formation of virus-blocking antibodies. Examples are the vaccines against the hepatitis B virus and human papilloma virus. Alternatively, parts of the viral genetic code can be moved to a harmless carrier virus, a vector. This method is used in vaccines against the Ebola virus. When vector vaccines are injected, the selected viral protein is produced in our cells, stimulating an immune response against the targeted virus. Producing whole virus protein and vector-based vaccines requires large-scale cell culture. This resource-intensive process limits the possibilities for rapid vaccine production in response to outbreaks and pandemics. Therefore, researchers have long attempted to develop vaccine technologies independent of cell culture, but this proved challenging. In our cells, genetic information encoded in DNA is transferred to messenger RNA, mRNA, which is used as a template for protein production. During the 1980s, efficient methods for producing mRNA without cell culture were introduced, called in vitro transcription. This decisive step accelerated the development of molecular biology applications in several fields. Ideas of using mRNA technologies for vaccine and therapeutic purposes also took off, but roadblocks lay ahead. In vitro transcribed mRNA was considered unstable and challenging to deliver, requiring the development of sophisticated carrier lipid systems to encapsulate the mRNA. Moreover, in vitro produced mRNA gave rise to inflammatory reactions. Enthusiasm for developing the mRNA technology for clinical purposes was therefore initially limited. These obstacles did not discourage the Hungarian biochemist Catalin Carrico, who was devoted to developing methods to use mRNA for therapy. During the early 1990s, when she was an assistant professor at the University of Pennsylvania, 
she remained true to her vision of realizing mrna as a therapeutic despite encountering difficulties in convincing research funders the significance of her project a new colleague of carico at her university was the immunologist du weisman he was interested in dendritic cells which have important functions in immune surveillance and the activation of vaccine induced immune responses spurred by new ideas a fruitful collaboration between the two soon began focusing on how different rna types interact with the immune system carico and weisman noticed that dendritic cells recognize in vitro transcribed mrna as a foreign substance which leads to their activation and the release of inflammatory signaling molecules they wondered why the in vitro transcribed mrna was recognized as foreign while mrna from mammalian cells did not give rise to the same reaction carico and weisman realized that some critical properties must distinguish the different types of mrna RNA contains four bases abbreviated A U G and C corresponding to A T G and C in DNA the letters of the genetic code Carico and Weissman knew that bases in RNA from mammalian cells are frequently chemically modified while in vitro transcribed mRNA is not they wondered if the absence of altered bases in the in vitro transcribed RNA could explain the unwanted inflammatory reaction To investigate this they produced different variants of mrna each with unique chemical alterations in their bases which they delivered to dendritic cells the results were striking the inflammatory response was almost abolished when base modifications were included in the mrna this was a paradigm change in our understanding of how cells recognize and respond to different forms of mrna Carico and Weissman immediately understood that their discovery had profound significance for using mrna as therapy These seminal results were published in the year 2005, 15 years before the COVID-19 pandemic. In further studies published in 2008 and 2010, Carico and Weissman showed that the delivery of mRNA generated with base modifications markedly increased protein production compared to unmodified mRNA. The effect was due to the reduced activation of an enzyme that regulates protein production. through their discoveries that base modifications both reduced inflammatory responses and increased protein production carico and weissman had eliminated critical obstacles on the way to clinical applications of mrna interest in mrna technology began to pick up and in 2010 several companies were working on developing the method vaccines against zika virus and the mers cov2 were pursued the latter is closely related to sars cov2 After the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, two base modified mRNA vaccines encoding the SARS-CoV-2 surface protein were developed at record speed. Protective effects of around 95% were reported and both vaccines were approved as early as December 2020. The impressive flexibility and speed with which mRNA vaccines can be developed paved the way for using the new platform also for vaccines against other infectious diseases. In the future the technology may also be used to deliver therapeutic proteins and treat some cancer types several other vaccines against SARS-CoV-2 based on different methodologies were also rapidly introduced and together more than 13 billion covid-19 vaccine doses have been given globally the vaccines have saved millions of lives and prevented severe disease in many more allowing societies to open and return to normal conditions Through their fundamental discoveries of the importance of base modifications in mRNA, this year's Nobel laureates critically contributed to this transformative development during one of the biggest health crises of our time.